chapter 1, uh, start with verse 19, excuse me, start in verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. <coughs> Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to bird and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, to change the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed with God. <coughs> For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use of that which is against nature. Mm. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another. Mm. Men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves the recompense of their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. For a few minutes this morning, what if God gave up? And that's a, to me, that's a frightening, sobering thought. What if God gave up? In Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and, the, and they took them wives of all which they chose. This is Genesis chapter 1. I'm mean, Genesis chapter 6, excuse me. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, which, uh, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of it now. And verse 5 in Genesis chapter 6 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil yes. continually. Yes. And they repented the Lord, that he had made man on the earth yes. and it grieved him at his heart. What if God gave up? And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the earth, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So thank God for verse number eight. But Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. And I'm so thankful that Noah found grace. Because God had gotten tired of man. What if God gave up? You see, we have many things that we know we should get out of our lives and simply give up. Sometimes we are successful and sometimes we tend to fail. But what happens when God gets tired of fooling with us and our foolishness? Amen. Is it possible for God to give up on his creation of man? God got fed up with man during the days of Noah. And we know what happened. And then it comes over to Romans chapter 1 and Paul tries to address some of the things that were going on in, in civilization and even things that were going on in the church during that time period. And three times in Romans chapter 1, in verse 24 and verse 26 and verse 28, Paul uses some form or some variation of saying God gave up or God gave them over. So what if God gave up? That's a sober thought, ain't it? 
Y'all don't need to say nothing else this morning. Mm-hmm. Y'all been keeping your faith that well. <laughs> but what if God gave up? Because, see, we, we have a tendency to give up as people. Amen. As Christians, we sometimes just give up. Well, I tell you this morning, don't give up. Whatever you do, don't give up. I don't know how many of you have seen this uh, little drawing before, but it was of a uh, some bird with a long neck, a uh, crane or something like that, and he, had, and he had a frog in his mouth. And the frog was about halfway down his throat, but they showed the frog's feet at the bottom of that neck. <laughs> and the caption, and that, it's always me because the caption said, don't give up. That ball, you may have me in your throat in the process of swallowing me, but I'm not giving up. And that's where I feel as a child of God, I'm not going to give up. And I encourage you this morning, don't give up because God is not going to give up on us. Amen. Amen. God has made provisions for us to be saved. He has not changed a thing. He has not given up on us. The evidence is before us. You see, Paul understood this in 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul said, so his long suffering will be made known to man. Because Paul, God could have given up on Paul a long time ago, amen. But he didn't give up on him. And God is not giving up on us. And I say, don't give up on God. In Matthew chapter 19, here's our close. In Matthew chapter 19, I want you to see something. And we looked at this story from all different angles and all different ways and made applications from it. But this morning, I want us to look at this story one more time here. In Matthew chapter 19, because I'm asking the question, and the question is still on the table, what if God gave up? Like we sometimes just give up. And I want you to see that here is a prime example of what I'm talking about when someone just gives up. But God doesn't give up. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, it says, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Verse 18, he says, He said unto him, Which? Now this is this young man talking to Jesus. He says, which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up, what lack I yet? Here comes the problem. Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be complete, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Verse 22 says, But when the young man heard that say, he went away sorrowful. Yes, he did. For he had Great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Truly I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard, they were seemingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said, Hold up, I ain't finished yet. And said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things yes. are possible. Yes. If you want, as I close, let's go back to the verse 22. It says, but when the young man heard that said, notice what happened here. He went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now I want you to, don't, don't, don't erase it out the Bible, amen. But whatever it is in your what do I lack yet category, amen, I want you to take that out of the way and put it in place of it. And then I want to ask you, would you 
turn and walk away sorrowful because you had what else? Would you turn and walk away sorrowful? Or would you have the mind that Peter and some of the other apostles had in John chapter 6? You see, all those disciples over there in John chapter 6, they decided to turn back and not follow Jesus anymore. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, well, you also turn away? And Peter said, Lord, where are we going to go? <laughs> if you don't have God, where are you going to go? What is going to fill that empty void in your life if you don't have God in your life? Where are you going to go? Ain't no dusty-eyed man going to be able to fill that void. Or no dusty-eyed woman, amen, going to be able to fill that void. Where are you going to go? Is alcohol going to be what fills it? Is drugs, what is it? Just going to fill that void. Peter said, Lord, where are we going to go? You got what I need, amen. You have everything that we need. Amen. But this rich young ruler, back to him as I close it. In verse 22 he says, it says, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I want you to understand this morning. From where I sit, this young man gave up too easy. If you know like I know, and you believe like I believe what the word of God says, and you believe that there's a place called hell, amen, where the fire is not quenched, where the worm dies not, it's an eternal damnation. If you believe in that place, this young man gave up too easy. you to believe me this morning that had that been Brother Bishop, amen, this conversation would have went on just a little bit longer. <laughs> because I would have had to come back and say, Lord, hold up. We're talking about my soul here. Lord, Lord we're talking about my soul, and I know that, that your word teaches uh, that, that what should it profit a man, Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, what should it profit me if I gain the whole world and lose my own soul? Lord, can we talk about this a little more? I can't see myself just turning away and giving up on God. Lord, this is my soul we're talking about. And I can see myself turn, saying, Lord, you know, you're right. I do have a lot of possessions. But, but what you tell me, Lord, is I need to sell everything and distribute it to the poor and follow you. And I can see myself church there, Lord, Lord, hold on, Lord. This is, Lord, this, you got me. You got me. This is my weakness. Amen. But Lord, though I am weak, I know you are strong. And Lord, I'm calling on you now to help me to overcome whatever my weakness is. Whatever it is that's keeping me from giving it up and following you, Lord, help me. Yeah. That's what we need to do this morning. Yes. Whatever it is, whatever your weakness may be, because Jesus would have helped that young man, because we know he said to the apostles, he said, with men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Yeah. Jesus said, I can help that young man. And he can help some young man here this morning. He can help some young mother here this morning. What is it? that you have a weakness dealing with? What is it that you can't let go of that's hindering you from serving God 100%? What is it? Y'all probably felt this was a little mean this morning. Mm -hmm. But I mean what I say. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But, but what is it that's hindering you from serving God this morning? Don't you think it's worth it to not do like this young man and, and, and verse 22, it just, it just bothers me. It says that when, when the young man heard that said, he went away sorrowful. Yes, he, did. he understood. He knew the situation he was saying. He knew, brother love, that his soul was at stake. His very soul. Amen. But nevertheless, Amen. he went away sorrowful. Right. Well, with each and every one of you this morning, Every one of us, I'm asking you, 
What is it that you're not willing to come down here this morning and lay before Jesus and say, Lord, you got me on the other one. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm putting it before you, Lord. I want to turn it over to you because my soul is more important than whatever it is. My soul is more important than my wealth. My soul is more important than my health. My soul is more important than everything I have. What is it, Lord? Here it is. And now, help me to deal with it. Because I am weak. And you are strong. Whatever it is this morning, whatever sin it is that's called you to not serve God, come down this morning, lay it before God, let him have it, and walk away, but don't walk away like this young man being sorry. I want you to walk away like that eunuch in Acts chapter 8. I want you to walk out of here leaping and praising God. You can do that this morning, because the thing is, what if God just gave up like we give up? I'm so thankful that God is still long-suffering. And we know as of this moment in time, he has not given up on us yet because we are still here. Today is your day. Now is the acceptable time. Today is your day of salvation. What's stopping you? Whatever it is, I don't care what it is, God can work on it for you. Don't take whatever it is that you you deal with it and walk away with it and still try to deal with it. Jesus says, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Just like he could have taken that young man and dealt with his situation and just covered his hoard of money. Mm-hmm. Whatever your problem or your situation is this morning. And I don't have time to run through the normal list, amen. But whatever it is this morning, I want you to come this morning and give it up to God. Amen. Give it up to God. If you haven't been serving God because of whatever it is in your life to keep you away from it, Today is your day. Mm-hmm. What is it? Because though we are weak, God is strong. Yeah. Whatever sin you're dealing with this morning, you can give it up this morning. Whatever else in your life that's keeping you from serving God to your fullest, you can give it up to this morning because one day that question is going to come back to you. What if God gave up? If you're here this morning and you're not a child of God, you ought to come home. I'd be obedient to the gospel of Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. He was buried and he rose again the third day. That's the good news of the gospel. That story saves you. How does it save you? First, well, first, hear it. You have to believe it. You have to have a change of mind. It's called repentance. Luke 13, 3 and 5 says, I tell you, but except you repent, you will perish. Amen. And then you must be willing to confess with your mouth. The same confession that the unit made in Acts chapter 8. Now about verse 35, he said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you go down to water grave baptism, and all your sins washed away. Yes, yes. You rise up and walk in newness of life, and you get the Holy Spirit, and you ask for the blood of all Jesus Christ. You can do that this morning. If you're here, you're not a child of God, you can become one. What is it? Because what if God gave up? And if you're this morning, you're a child of God, and you're falling by the wayside for whatever reason. It doesn't matter what it is. Whatever that burden is you've been carrying around all year, what I'm going to the close of another year calendar yet? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And some of us still carry the same thing we got with January 1, 2012. We still carry those same loads. Lay those loads down. Lay those burdens down, whatever they are. Listen, we stop sinning when we make up our mind to stop sinning. We stop doing contrary to God's will and his way when we make up our mind to stop doing it. And then we start practicing not doing whatever it was. How this thing works. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Amen. Yeah. I want us all to be saved. I want us all to go to heaven. But we can't go to heaven doing contrary to what God says to do. Now, if you're here this morning, you're not a child of God, you ought to become one. If you're here this morning, something keeps you from serving God to the fullest, you need to get that right with God this morning. Whatever it is, don't walk away like that young man. Don't walk away sorrowful this morning. Walk away rejoicing. The angels in heaven don't stand by. Oh, one sinner may repent. More than will those men not just when you know repentance. Give it up this morning.